Hey everyone, Jason here with another NanoCoaster video. Today we're going to be assembling Diamondback from Kings Island in Mason, Ohio. Diamondback is a B&M hypercoaster that is mostly known for its splashdown ending. Within the box you'll see that we have a sheet of instructions, just single-sided, so nothing on the back. We have our base plate here, and we also have our track pieces. Uh, now unlike a lot of the nano coasters, these track pieces are actually pre-cut. Uh, this is something they did for a little while. Um, the original nano coasters you all had to cut out, then they switched to this, and now they've switched back to cutting them out, uh, mostly due to cost. Um, however, when you get nano coasters like this, they're typically a little bit easier to assemble as you don't have to do any of the, the cutting. Uh, so let's jump right in and get started. Now the first step with any nano coaster is going to be to remove the white paper from the black base plate. This is a step that's oftentimes forgotten about, uh, but something you want to make sure that you do. To do that, you'll stick your fingernail just underneath one of the little sharp corners here and start peeling away the, the plastic lining here. And we'll want to do this to both sides. So I'm going to quickly peel this away and then we'll move on. So there we have the exposed base plate. If you've watched my other videos, you know that I like to add an extra step to the kit that's not included, and that's to add a logo to the base plate. Uh, the kit does come with a little diamond back sign there with the logo on it, but it's kind of hard to see from a distance. So what I've done here is I've taken my Cricut and I've cut this logo out of metallic vinyl, and I'm gonna apply it to the base plate. Uh, this is something that oftentimes I'm constrained by size, and that's the case with this one, so the logo is a little bit smaller than I like to have, um, but it's still a little bit easier to see than the little sign. So to apply the logo, I've put it on some transfer tape here, and I can simply press this onto the base plate right where I want it, and then peel away the transfer tape. So there we have the completed logo on the base plate. Um, as I mentioned, it is a little bit smaller than I like to have. Um, however, it works for its purposes. If that's something you'd like to do and you have access to a vinyl cutter, uh, there's a link down below to download the Diamondback logo as an SVG file. Now the next step is going to be to remove the pieces of track from this paper. Uh, so pull this out of the bag really quickly. Um, and the easiest way to do that is actually to peel or just, just to tear the plastic bag away. Um, the reason for that is the paper that the track is attached to has one to two pieces of tape on each side uh, that actually hold the track pieces into place. Um, so they're not attached along the entire place. If you look in the middle there, there's just a little piece of tape. Um, so we need to just now remove this. Um, to do that, you'll want to go where the tape is and just kind of carefully twist the track pieces. Um, not super strong, you don't want to bend them, um, but there you can see we removed that piece with no bends in it, just perfectly. Uh, we can lay that there on the table. But we'll repeat that with the second piece here. Um, we'll come off really pretty easily. Um, some of the kits are a little bit more difficult to get off, um, and this side appears to be a little bit more difficult, probably because it's attached to more metal. Um, but still, if you just work with it kind of a little bit back and forth, it'll eventually come loose. You may have to do a little bit of lifting as well. Now, as you can see, we have all of the track pieces, the sign and the station piece all removed from that white paper. So now it's time to start adding the track. The first piece of track we're gonna add here is this lift hill with the first drop into the first airtime hill. Um, and so that piece is going to start right back over here on the side of the base plate. Um, we'll start with these two longer tabs here for the lift hill and just drop them right into their slots. And then we'll just kind of follow the track layout around, put the big large tab in here to place. And then we'll bend this small tab at the end to its slot here as well. Um, so it just kind of goes like that. Um, once we have it all pressed in, there's some tabs on the bottom here that we want to bend over to hold into place. And then do a little bit of bending here to make sure that it actually follows the track layout. So at the bottom of the lift hill, it actually turns a little bit sharper than it just goes into naturally. Um, and then the end of the track piece is going to bend a little bit as well. Now with this first track piece, there's some additional bends that also have to be done. Um, if you've noticed with each of these tall supports, there's three on the lift hill and then two on the airtime hill, there's actually supports that need to be bent out towards us. Um, the way you'll do that is actually with a pair of needle nose pliers. So four of the supports are going to bend out towards the front of the base plate, um, where one of them is actually going to bend back in. So we'll start with this one towards the bottom of the lift hill 
and we'll just grab the top of it with the needle nose pliers and bend it 90 degrees uh, straight out so that it looks proper, so that it looks correct. You may need to bend the other supports back into place, um, but it shouldn't be too difficult. Um, same thing with the second one, it's gonna bend out the same way. Now the third support is actually gonna bend inward. So we'll grab that one and we'll bend it the opposite direction uh, so that it will support the, the lift hill that way. And then on the airtime hill, both of the supports will also bend towards the front of the base plate. So we'll grab each of those as well and give them that same 90 degree bend. So there you can see we have all of the different supports bent out just the way they should be. It's time to move on to the second piece of track. The second piece of track is going to have this one hill here um, up into a flat area. And so this is going to be step number three and we're actually going to start with the hill here. Uh, now before we apply this piece there's actually a support on here that needs to be bent as well. Um, so same thing, we'll grab this support here that needs to be bent out and bend that out 90 degrees uh, so it looks exactly like that. And then we'll come to this edge of the base plate and we'll drop the two medium tabs into place. And then there's a small tab as it starts to go into the turn. Um, and then as we continue the turn around, there's another small tab and then it will end with a little bit larger tab. Uh, smaller than the, the other two at the start, but bigger than the two smaller ones. Um, and then same as the other piece, uh, we'll bend over these supports on the bottom and then make sure that the shaping on the turnaround is right. And it looks like it is. Uh, so there's the second piece attached to the base plate. Now step four is gonna continue on with this piece here with two hills. Um, this, this first hill is actually gonna be the turnaround um, and then it's gonna go into this other hill. Um, you'll notice there's also four supports here that need to have their supports bent. Uh, so this first one is gonna have both of the supports bent into the turn. Uh, so you wanna look at where the turnaround is uh, these two are going to bend in. Uh, sometimes you can bend these after you've attached them, but these two specifically, um, you wouldn't be able to because like I said, they're in the middle of a turnaround. You really wouldn't be able to get the pliers in there. And then this third one's going to bend the opposite direction. It's going to bend uh, towards me here. Um, this one, the pliers are kind of hard to get in there. I'm going to see if I can just bend it with my fingers. Try to get my fingernail in there. Bend it maybe a little bit, cut it a little bit there. Once again, grab these pliers and just try to bend it out. And then the last one is going to bend the, first, the same direction as the first two. Um, so opposite the last one that we just did. Uh, so we'll bend that out that way. And so there we have that piece all prepared properly. And so this piece is actually going to continue uh, from the shorter end of the piece we just put in. So we'll drop this little tab into place. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, this is going to go into a turnaround where those two supports are. Uh, so we're going to want to bend this around the turnaround into a long, the longest tab on the piece. Um, and then once we have that in place, kind of lift this over the track as well. I uh, want to make sure that the, the supports are on the, the right side of the track. So now we can press the long one down into place, put the short one into place, and then put the last short one into place. So this is actually going to connect both of the track pieces we've already done. Um, so now that that's there, once again, we can bend over these tabs on the bottom to hold that into place. And this one, we may need to do a little bit more track shaping uh, just to get the turnaround right, but possibly not. It actually looks pretty good there. Um, so you can see that's kind of where the, the track goes over itself. Um, turns out pretty good. Step five is going to move on to this track piece here um, with a couple smaller hills. And this is actually going to pick right up. Uh, this is actually going to pick right off uh, from this piece right here, uh, from the second piece we installed. Um, so we're actually gonna take that in with the long tab and that's gonna drop in right next to the airtime hill here. We can put that into place. Um, there's actually two long tabs there in a row. Um, if you ever put these together, you know that there's really typically only one way to put each of these in. Um, and then there's a turnaround that you can see engraved into the track there. Uh, but we're gonna kinda go around the turnaround and get these singular tabs dropped into place as well. Uh, to, to finish that turnaround. And then we'll bend over the tabs. 
make sure everything looks right on the turnaround. Um, it's not quite as round as I'd like it, so I'm just gonna kinda come in here with my fingers and go around it, get it rounded just perfectly. And that is gonna lead us to our last track piece, um, which contains the splash down portion of the ride. Um, no water on this base plate. Um, however, if you know the ride, um, at the very end, you actually come off this little drop and you have a splash down into a little reservoir of water um, and then it pops right back up into the final brakes. Um, but this, this splash down really slows you down. Uh, so we can drop that, those two tabs into place there. Um, I guess there's actually three there on the straight portion. And then we'll bend around this final one to connect the end to the start of the lift hill. And then we'll bend over the four tabs that are left on the bottom. And then do some final shaping on this turnaround here. Um, but it really doesn't need much. Um, so there's the completed track layout for Diamondback. Now the final two steps, like always, are going to be first of all to attach a little sign here. So we'll drop that down into place with the logo, bend over the tab on the bottom, and bend it backwards a little bit so it's a little bit slanted there. And then finally, we have the little station building. Um, all this nano coaster station buildings look exactly the same. They're all these little house structures. So we'll actually just bend that into place. Um, looks just kind of like that put that here onto the station portion of the base and bend over the tabs. Um, and that is the completed kit, just as it comes from Coaster Dynamics from Kings Island, um, except I've added the logo. Now the last step that I like to do is to actually add a felt bottom to the Nano Coaster. If you look at the bottom, you have these tabs here um, that can easily bend or scratch a surface if you move the Nano Coaster around. Um, so I have some felt here that I've purchased on Amazon. You can see I've already cut one of the Nano Coasters out of it. Um, but with each of these pieces of felt, you can typically get about two nano coasters. Um, so to apply this, it has an adhesive backing built in. I'm just gonna lay the nano coaster here so that it fits onto the felt. And then I'm gonna take a pencil and I'm gonna trace around it. Now, a lot of nano coasters have a straight edge that I can put right against the edge of the felt. Um, this one doesn't really have one that works that way uh, just because everything bends in different directions. Um, so I'm gonna have to cut out the whole thing. But there we have the entire layout of the coaster traced. And now I'm just gonna cut it out um, with a pair of scissors. I'm gonna cut right inside the pencil marking. Uh, you want the felt to be just a little bit smaller than the nano coaster uh, so that it doesn't hang over the edge. Um, you can trim it up if you don't get it quite right, um, but it's a little bit easier if you just do it this way. Uh, so we're just gonna cut right inside that line. So there we have our cutout felt. Um, the next step is gonna to be to peel away just a little bit of the backing here. Um, as I mentioned, this has an adhesive backing built in. Uh, I'm gonna peel away just a little bit of it here and tear the paper. And this allows us to get it properly lined up with the coaster so I can start at the non-sticky end here that I don't have it rebuilt. So I can start at the end where I haven't rebuilt it just to make sure I get everything covered up properly. Um, and then once I have it all lined up perfectly, I'll press down on the adhesive. Then we can lift it up and peel away the rest of the backing. And then we'll just use the edge of the table here to help us apply the felt straight. Um, we'll just kind of rub it up against. I'll use my hand here to line it up, make sure that everything's perfect. Um, the felt can stretch. Uh, you don't want it to, so you just kind of want to make sure that you get it lined up right um, and have it cover the bottom of the coaster properly. Um, and so now I can slide the coaster around, nothing's going to scratch up. Um, and that's what the felt bottom looks like. Um, so there's my completed model of Diamondback from Kings Island. Um, great looking coaster. It's available from Kings Island directly or from their shop online. I'll put a link down below. Um, as I mentioned earlier, you can also download an SVG of the logo below. And I'll also link to where on Amazon I purchased the felt bottom um, that works really well on these nano coasters. Um, ultimately, a really cool model here. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure you hit the thumbs up button. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you hit subscribe. Also, if you don't already subscribe to my Instagram page, um, I take coaster photos over at jw.coasterpics on Instagram. Uh, make sure you check that as well. Uh, thanks for watching and have a great day.